Ho and happy holidays, Foundation staff. Dr. Theron Sherman here, and welcome to our eggnog and yule log Christmas Q&A. Dr. Sherman's office hours last about two hours this evening, give or take. Current time at Site 42 is 5.08 p.m. And so wherever you are in the world, I miss, wish you a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whichever ones of those you are looking forward to. We're here in ugly sweater season. We've got our eggnog ready for action. And wow, oh wow, that chat is a flying. Welcome everybody to the stream, me oh my. You are correct, tomorrow is Christmas, as Phoenix Wright would say. It's almost Christmas, which means it's not Christmas yet. Antique Milk, thank you for being a member and thank you for liking my sweater. Buff Santa is here to give you all your Christmas games and haunt your nightmares. Much safer than the Yule Man, believe me. We all prefer Buff Santa, as terrifying as his smile is. What if Josie the half cat sees 096? Will it look for both halves? Jackson, that is a wonderfully interesting question. And I would believe no, because what 096's problem is, is that you perceived it, which is in your brain. So unless Josie's other half also has a brain, which we're not even sure if it has another half, let alone if there's a brain in there, if it's walking around on its own. So my assumption is that would not be the case. I would track down the head and that would be the end of that. Although I'd rather not that be the case. And in the meantime, while I look up some research relating to Josie the Half Cat, I'm noticing that we have 128 viewers in the chat and only 34 likes. So Site42 staff, you know what to do to that like button. And in the meantime, let me go look up Josie's number. That would be in series one. Oh, I forgot to do Tails version, otherwise I will not get the intel I want. Five, two, nine. There are only two Josie the Half Cat, cat Tails. This one's talking about time and SCP-411 and SCP-408, the butterflies, Jack of Diamonds, Doc... Mm-hmm... Cats and dogs and ornithosaurians. Uh, even Kane Pathos Crow. Okay, so that is uh, unrelated to what we're looking for here. That doesn't tell us about any other half of Josie. Today I messed up Dr. Smiley's office. He yelled a lot and started going bang, bang, but he didn't get me. He's so funny when he's loud. Then I went to the cafeteria and the cooks gave me something tasty. They always give me something tasty when I make my cute face. All right, so uh, that is Josie's mindset throughout a day, but it does not have anything to do with its hindquarters. So that is still a mystery to us at the Foundation. Back to the chat, which is flying by. Engineer VR, welcome back to the stream and thank you for your dono. Make sure to grab yourself some roasted meat on your way past the commissary today. Sir, I have Monkey D. Luffy. Where do I send him? Uh, to the most secure box you can find, because I know he's got those weird stretchy bits, and uh, it's a little hard to contain. So let's make sure we get it locked down tight. Maybe we use some, uh, some uh, cold-related anomalies to freeze it. That makes the stretching harder in most stretching anomalies, although I'm not familiar with uh, Monkey D. Luffy's actual weaknesses. D. Luffy, because I know the power scalers have something to say about this. So let's see what, uh, let's sneak in here. Um, ah, he can't swim, so we put him in an open cube. And I forgot about the devil fruit thing, yeah. So we put him in a cubicle room with a large moat and a pool in the middle and nothing to grab onto on either side, no door handle on the inside. So he'll be stuck there and he's gonna drown, it's fine. 
It would have to be a little trickier than that because he could do all sorts of like pressing out on the walls and moving them. So we'd have to up the durability there. The, where there's a will, there's a way. We'll figure it out. He's not caught yet. We have time. Clown, Dr. Sherman, how are you? I am doing quite well. Uh, we have our Christmas sweater, our Christmas Yule Talk, Q Log and Tunes. Some delightful eggnog. And we are counting down the last week of the holiday season. I'm also looking at the difference between my chat and what I look like on camera, and I'm giving you guys a better camera framing. Up close and personal. There we go. That looks a little better, I think. We'll see when I see it on the uh, thing here. Um, sir, I don't have any meat. Well, I told you, go to the commissary. They're roasting it right now for the Christmas party. SCP-5031 is cooking this year. It's going to be fabulous. Several courses. They have some leftover fried meat or roasted meat ready for you. Ah, oh, yes, real quickly, let me uh, share the stream to Twitter for all the uh, SCP folks to come on. Do, 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 home. And put some cute little Christmas tree emojis in there because everyone likes little cute little Christmas tree emoji. Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Giftmas! Happy Honda Days! Merry Chrysler! Oh wow, you like that very quickly. Good job. Where were we? Shared that out. Good job, me. Oh, redacted, Luffy is going to gear four. What do I do? I don't even know what that means, so uh, I guess I wish you the best of luck, huh? Sounds like you are headed straight into the danger zone. Amber, good to see you. Merry Christmas. Dr. Sherman, is the tree screaming yet? It unfortunately is not, although if you saw thy, uh, Short from this afternoon, you will notice that uh, we found a little goblin in there. But it was handing out presents, so we uh, politely put in a box. We weren't too aggressive. That would have been mean to such a adorable abomination. Merry Christmas. Now capture Santa. That is an order. Oh my, the amount of Santa Claus that we have in containment. Let me count the ways. Let's go on the database. And instead of Monkey D. Luffy, Santa Claus SCP. So, that's one, that's two. Wait. Okay, that's, uh, no, that's a prospective SCP. That doesn't count. That's a real SCP. Got it. Uh, ta -ta. Interesting. That's uh, fandom wiki, that doesn't count. Bailey's Santa. Gross, 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 gross. This is good, I'll be able to get you some uh, little Christmas readings along the way today. All right, still rolling through. That worries me, so we're gonna make sure it's here. When confronted with images of Santa Claus. Well, that's worth looking at. Uh, 4666 is, we all know, 4666. But we gotta have it on hand just in case. All pages loading properly. Good. 
Let's take that to series five and get good old Krampus loaded up in case we feel like reading a Krampus story. Kaboom. All right, that's enough Christmas SCPs for now. Let me check on the chat before we begin. Help, 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 sir, I'm running from Luffy. Well, I don't know what gear four is, so you're gonna wanna make sure to run faster. Dear God, run faster. In the meantime, oh, look at this. You guys successfully got the likes over the viewers. Congratulations, Site42 staff. I knew you had it in ya. Now don't take that as an excuse to stop putting up the likes, cause that'll only bring us to more and more people who need to learn the Christmas cheer of the foundation. All right, let's investigate here. SCP-4255, Santa Claus the Time Traveler. Item, cla item number SCP-4255, object class Keter, level four slash uh, 4255 classified. Let's have a sip of eggnog. Check that super chat I just saw uh, come in. Sir, I'm saying my goodbyes, I'm getting tired. No, engineer, you are not saying your goodbyes. You are going to use the power of Grayskull and you are gonna escape that wacky pirate man. We do not give here, give up here at the Foundation. What have we been doing the Foundation Fitness Initiative for all this time for? Would buff Santa appreciate you giving up? Never. We never give up, we never surrender. That's the Foundation way. Totally no one else has ever said that before. Uh, that's completely original. Uh, never give up, never surrender. That's ours. And we use that motto all the time and no one else ever has. That's completely original. So yes, dying is not on the menu this Christmas. So run, engineer, run. SCP-4255. Special containment procedures. Due to the widespread knowledge of the base anomalous properties of SCP-4255, it has been given the secondary classification of Cracked Veil Uncontained Anomaly. Ooh, we don't have a lot of those. In order to suppress further information on of SCP-4255, procedure Yule-02 has been created. Procedure Yule-02 occurs as follows. Annually on 12 noon UTC, November 22nd, memetic agents are to be implemented into all forms of media, including television programs, new works of literature, foundation front accounts on social media websites, and various forms of performing and visual arts. These medic agents are designed to implant false memories into parents or guardians of any children who celebrate the holiday Christmas. These memories include the purchasing of gifts that will be given to their children by SCP-4255 on December 25th, and the placing of said gifts on that night by SCP-4255. Any individuals which have been unaffected by the medic treatment described above are to be located and manually treated. Starting at 8 p.m. December 24th, two unarmed military aircrafts are to locate, track, and follow all temporal versions of 4255 and make note of any noticeable changes in behavior from 4255. Lethal force is not permitted when interacting with 4255. When all versions of SCP-4255 have vanished, all Foundation interference is to cease. At 12 UTC, December 25th, social media to be tracked for all any images or accounts with SCP-4255 and images or conspiracy theories centered around Procedure Yule-02. Any offending piece of information are to be labeled as a hoax or a race, with publishers being located and treated to Class A amnestics. In extreme cases, all viewers of any information described above are to be treated with Class A amnestics, with all social media being cleansed of any information on SCP-4255 or Procedure Yule-2 that these cases could spawn. Effort this part has been redacted now. Efforts to partake in a secondary interview with SCP-4255 are to be attempted, as SCP-4255 seems to possess valuable information on controllable temporal anomalies and on the historical future of the human race. All right, that's an interesting wind-up. We'll see how that goes as we continue, but let's uh, take a break for the Super Chats. You guys are flying in. Engineer, you found the meat. I knew you would found, find the meat, and not by going to Arbo's, because Arbo's doesn't have the meat in the Foundation's version of it. Zane Grimm, thank you for your dono. Currently playing Baldur's Gate 3 is the Dark Urge and watching. Any suggestions? What should I do? Hmm. I'm going to at random, because I have not played Baldur's Gate 3 yet. I am interested. I'm going to look up Dark Urge, Baldur's Gate 3. At random, I'm going to give you a suggestion. Do do do. Special origin. Looks like a monster, amnesia, 
cold and calculated, but they are different now. I think that whatever the next quest you go on as the Dark Urge, you need to agree to whatever the NPC says. Because you are trying to make up for your believed to be darker past. So whatever the NPC says, you believe it, and you follow through with it like a good little hero. And then if they happen to be tricking you, well, that is the uh, both karmic retribution for your prior misdeeds, as well as uh, signs of your naivety in your new amnestic state. That is what I suggest for you. Let me know how it goes, by the way, if you decide to do that. Because uh, we're going to be here for the next hour and a half plus. Office hours are running long today since it's the Christmas holiday. And I'm here for you guys, Site42 staff. Mo Keck, thank you for your first donation of the Site42 coffers. Make sure to grab yourself some roasted meat on your way past the commissary. Have you heard of this Serenitatum project? No Serenitatum project. I have not heard of the Serenitatum project. Serenitatum project. It's a hard word to say. But I have not heard of you. But I uh, hope for the best for you. And thank you for your super chat number three to the Site42 coffers. Make sure to pick yourself a Christmas coffee on your way past the commissary. Trag11 Gash. Thank you for your first dono of the Site42 coffers. Dr. Sherman, what do I do? SCP-076-2 has breached. No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We let it out for the holiday. It's been behaving very well on its mobile task force missions. And so we let it out for some gentle sparring with some of the mobile task forces. And it promised, in the name of the Christmas spirit, not to murder them. So, fingers crossed. Engineer, I found a weird looking fruit. Should I eat it? I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip a coin. Head says, yes, you should eat the weird fruit. Uh, Tails, you should not eat the weird fruit, Engineer. You should instead turn it into your superior officer for study. Honestly, that's probably what you should have done in the first place. I was just not thinking because of Christmas cheer and we could use some more anomalous staff members at this point because they keep, uh, well, anyways. Tree, one dollar and two cents. Thank you for your first dono to the stream and make sure to grab yourself a big ol' helping of fucking screaming when you go to the commissary. Thank you. Why do I want you to scream, by the way? That's for me to know and you to find out. All right. Part two of SCP-4255. Description. SCP-4255 is a humanoid male with an aged appearance, approximately 1.4 meters in height and 150 kilograms in weight. 4255 appears to be in his 60s and 70s. However, reports of 4255 manifestations have dated back to 400 AD. 4255 possesses an appearance similar to the traditional attire of the character Santa Claus. Uh, footnote. No current connection between 4255 and the Bishop St. Nicholas have been made, along with the red and gold ornate sleigh that his character is known to be present in. Designated 4255-1. 4255-1 is capable of flight via unknown means and is able to travel at speeds of approximately 100 kilometers per hour. With 4255 remaining inside 4255-1 during flight, even when scientifically impossible. 4255-1 is drawn by eight servant animals re resembling Rangifer Tyrandus, Footnote, also known by the names caribou or reindeer. Although infrared scans show that these do not possess any heat signatures. And it's currently unknown if these are living organisms. Inter... Worst time for hiccups. Interesting. UIU, that was really funny last night turning off my microphone, but you better not. You better not. It's Christmas. We're giving you a break on the roasting. I could roast you like chestnuts. On an open fire, I could roast you like the meat that's being roasted for the Christmas dinner, but I'm not. I'm being nice. Do not turn off my microphone again. 
That was so rude last night. Do not turn off my microphone again. You are you. I'm watching you. Do not do it. Do not do it. Not, no. No. Christmas kindness. Christmas cheer. Christmas truce. Back to our reading. 4255 manifestations periodically occur at 8 p.m. UTC, December 24th each year, during which SCP-4255 will appear somewhere approximately one kilometer in the air above Earth's surface in its sleigh. Santa and Santa sleigh appear to possess... I'm changing out the number so I could talk less. I'm going to give you guys... just. I'm going to sub those in. It makes it easier to say. Appear to possess the ability to generate small-scale temporal anomalies. During its appearance, as many as 294 versions of 4255 are present on or across the globe at once, with many versions possessing visual differences that have not yet occurred to Santa from a linear standpoint. Santa manifestations also always follow a similar pattern of events after its initial appearance. Santa will land on the roof or near a household of individuals that celebrate the holiday Christmas, regardless of religious background, and will use its temporal anomaly abilities to enter the household. Santa will then produce a multitude of wrapped gifts and toys with number of gifts given varying from child to child. It is also of note that 4255 has significant understanding of the likes and dislikes of each child on Earth, with presents given having an 82.56 accuracy rate compared to what the children would have liked to receive for the gift at the time. That's really specific. 82.56% accuracy rate. I wonder how we rated that. Did it Was it just like a up or down and that's how we rated it? Or was there like a preference scale of 1 to 10? Huh. All recorded gifts have been non-anomalous, with Santa actively avoiding the giving of gifts to a child. Actively avoiding the giving of gifts a child wants if it could be classified as anomalous. Santa will repeat this pattern until all children who celebrate Christmas on the planet have received at least one gift from it. Attempts to approach Santa or Santa sleigh in an effort to capture either anomaly on the ground or in the sky have resulted in failure. With 4255 using its temporal abilities to evade capture. Addendum. Before an SCP-425 manifestation on the year 2018, several houses of Foundation personnel were equipped with audio transmission devices, which was then used to make an official direct contact with Santa for the first time on record. Begin log. Interviewed, Santa. Interviewer, Researcher Mayor. Begin log. Hello? Can you hear me? Who is this? This is Researcher Charlotte Mayor. Oh, Charlotte Mayor. This is Researcher Charlotte Mayor. I come from an organization which... The SZP Foundation? They told me I'd run into you guys today. Aren't you the people always trailing in those jets? Those things are fucking loud up close, you know? Quite a mouth on Santa here. Uh, well, it's probably going to mess up time and cause some butterfly effect shit, but they told me to tell you this... Oh, wait. No. Ugh, my pen! I can't live without my pen. It keeps my blood flowing. That's my anomalous property. You heard it here first. Not at all a Christmas fib. Um, the SCP Foundation. Yes. Who do you mean by they? Ugh. Well, it's probably gonna mess up time and cause some butterfly effect shit. But they told me you guys tell you guys this for some reason. Uh, well, uh, they're called the U.S. Department of Chronology. Pretty stupid name, if you ask me. Chronology sounds like the most sci-fi-ish thing ever. What year is it now? Want to make sure I don't say anything too major. 2018. Uh, oh god. Well, they said there's some government branch that keeps check over time travel and stuff, and well, they forced me to do this. I like to go find stuff from the past and, well, take it. I had one of Hitler's paintings before. A block from those pyramids that were in Africa. You know, stuff like that. I'm afraid I don't quite follow. What does this have to do with you being, well... Being... I'm getting to that. Just give me a sec. So one day, some government cronies came and took me away. Thought I was being careful, I did. But I guess not careful enough. Probably have some way to detect time travel. Anyway, they told me I had to do this. Looked like I got off easy. But this got boring after a while. Been doing this for like... Mm, two, two and a half years. One Christmas every day. Hmm, I see. Do you have a real name, then? Stan Klain. I haven't been born yet. <laughs> oh, that's always a weird thing to say. You probably know me as Santa Claus or something like that. Ugh. 
You tell a kid your name in the 5th century and half the deaf little shit tells everyone your name is Santa Claus. I hope some crazy government shoots me out of the sky so I can get this the hell over with. If you're a time traveler, then when are you from? 2099. Santa Claus, 2099. Huh. Well then, how do you have such good understanding of each child's wants for the holiday? Is this some sort of future technology? Not sure I can tell you that. I've caused enough paradoxes with this one interview already. Wait a second. Are you guys going to put this in a document or something? Yes, this will be logged and... Shit! That's how they knew! They read this damn log! Excuse me? I ain't saying anything else! 4255 uses the temporal anomaly to vacate the area in his sleigh. Closing statement. Santa refused all efforts to cooperate with questioning after the events of this interview and instead yelled obscenities at interviewers when attempts to question were made. No re records of a Stan Klain matching Santa's description have been found. All right. Uh, we have one more addendum to this, but back to the chat for a second. Wow. Chat is really flying. Hmm. And we almost have double the likes the viewers, so... Uh, Good luck with that. Just uh, seven more likes and we'll have double likes to viewer ratio. Engineer. Sir, may I have a break? I ate the fruit and after containing Luffy. Oh, engineer, I specifically told you not to do that. Well, when you take your break, go into a containment cell because now you're anomalous. Good work. Now you are being contained. Mo Keck. Somebody just gave the Cuddle Monster pounds of Fanta. What do you mean, pounds of Fanta? They don't measure liquid in pounds. What does that mean? Is it pounds of the syrup? That's still in volume. I'm very confused. How, did, how are you measuring this? I need to know how much of a lockdown we need to go into. Oh, you guys almost beat the like to viewer doubling. But then nine more viewers showed up. So now we're at 89 viewers. So we got to get to 180 to beat the viewer count. You can do it, Site42 staff. I believe in you. It's the Christmas spirit that strengthens you. The O5 has declared truce with all GOI for Christmas. Thank you for pointing that out, Trag. I hope the UIU gets the message. Somebody just gave the mo Cuddle Monster 150 pounds of soda. Please help. I don't know how I'm dodging all of these and talking. I haven't slept in three days. Please help. I haven't slept in three days. Mo, mo, mo. You need to do what the engineer did and run. Get out of the site. Thankfully, 999 is in a different site being studied because holy cow, that would be really bad to have to deal with on Christmas for us. So thankfully, not my site, not my problem. <laughs> Cat, thank you for becoming a Site42 member. Welcome to the Site42 staff. Engineer 0343, I have some berries and someone's trying to sell me a katana. Should I buy it? Why do you keep doing this? How are you getting into all these situations? You should stop getting into all these situations. That's what you should do. Go sit in your cell where you are now anomalous and deal with it. All right, let's finish this article real quick. Addendum 4255-2. On September 4th, 2097, the Foundation Department of Chronology was formed after the discovery of replicable, controllable travel non-linearly through time was discovered. After parallels between Santa's described host organization and the newly formed department were made, Stan Klain, a man matching the physical description of 4255, was tracked and placed into Foundation custody. It was later found that Klain had access to a temporal anomaly allowing him to travel through time non-linearly. To avoid a possible CK class reality reconfiguration scenario, or a PT class paradoxical time breakdown scenario, the Foundation is to give Klain full the full capabilities to perform the actions of Santa, along with the recorded appearance of Santa. A large sleigh built to the specifications of 4255-1 was created using several anomalies, making it capable of controllable flight, along with the sleigh and Klain being equipped with devices designed to create small-scale temporal anomalies. Eight heat-resistant models resembling the now extinct Ranger for Tyrandus were attached to the front of the sleigh in a manner that suggests they are pulling the craft from behind them. Gifts are to be gifts given are to be produced to the BT Chi, Beta Temporal Knowledge Artificial Intelligence Unit, an AI created by the Foundation that uses time analogy anomalies to know all information from across linear time frame. 
While the BT Chi unit currently only knows information up to 20 redacted, this number is expected, correction, known to change at a rate that will be constant enough for Klain to fulfill his duties. All other information into the BT Chi unit is classified. It is currently unknown when Klain will finish his duties as Santa Claus. Correction, Santa, uh, Klain will finish his role as Santa on Christmas of the year 21 blank. All right, so uh, I think what we just figured out here at the end is that Christmas has an expiration date in the 2100s. So uh, good news, all of us who are alive and not artificially, anomalously life extended, we'll get to have Christmas to the end of our days. No worries about that. Going back to the chat. Thank you, SCP-4255. And hey, since I read this today, and I did enjoy it, I'm going to go ahead and give it an upvote. Remember that if you're a member of the SCP Wiki and you like a story, make sure to give it an upvote. You can also downvote it if you don't like it, whichever, I'm not your dad. Or am I your dad? What's this time travel stuff all about? I'm very confused. So, taking it back to the chat. Tree. Tree. What would you do if I screamed? Would you stop the pain, the torture... Oh, freaking out. Yes, that is exactly what I would do. I would stop messing with you if you just screamed. So the question is, why don't you scream? If you do scream, it would be all over. So uh, it's on it's on you, buddy. It's on you. If you're gonna if you're gonna scream and get the job done, that would be very easy. Uh, and by the way, Chad, I'm looking at the likes to viewer ratio right now, and we're at 95 viewers which is just shy of the uh, 182 likes that we have. So why don't we uh, push those likes up to 200? That way we clear those uh, viewer counts. I believe in you, Site42 staff. Check in the Super Chats. Mar Merrick, thank you for your dono. Make sure to grab yourself some mistletoe over at the Decoration Center. Angel hair is not an SCP, but if it were, how would we contain it? Well, I don't know what an angel hair is. But it looks like it's all right. Angel Hair TV series game. Oh, okay. That thing. I saw some uh, online ARG people talk about that. I saw Nick Nocturne talking about that with his night mind, his big brain night mind. So, yeah. That is a. Uh, I think uh, we would contain the tapes. We would contain the person and the tapes and we'd run tests. That's what we would do with that. Pretty easy there. But obviously, if I were doing the full episode, I would do some more uh, research. Engineer, chat, can you help me? You, no one can help you. You're going in containment, engineer. That's what you get for eating a fruit when I told you not to eat a fruit. A, a, a devil fruit, not a regular fruit. Eat fruit. It's good for your diet. Be healthy. Blah, blah. Andre, good to see ya. Did SCP-1000 create SCP-2000? Interesting question. I read one of the SCP-7000 entries that we went over was all about how, uh, ba 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 ba, how advanced the technology of SCP-1000 was. So my thought process behind that, as I run over to the series page, is I'm going to check the Tales version. And I'm going to see Bigfoot Transmissions, Ancient Ones, Tim Wilson's Close Shave about the Serpent, Lord Blackwood of the Bigfoot, Commentary on Selected Items in the Same A Gallery, Quiet Days, Children of the Night. Well, it looks to me like it's not something they put together. Although, I would not be shocked if that were the case. Those uh, primeval primates are pretty clever. But right now, I don't believe that uh, is the case. Engineer, I feel like fighting Luffy. The answer is no. You sit in your cell and you think about what you've done. Sir, I ate it before you told me not to eat it. You wait, didn't wait for instructions. You asked me if you should eat it, and then you ate it anyway. So whose fault is that? Hmm? Hmm. That's what I thought. We don't get cocky and jump ahead of our instructions. That's how we get in trouble.
Hey guys, I drew a Dr. Musherman. Is that a, is that a mushroom Sherman? Is that a, you know, I've always considered myself to be a pretty fun guy. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you, Accelerator, if anything, for the setup for that terrible joke. Gotcha. It's Vor Jesus' birthday tomorrow. Oh, it is Vor Jesus' birthday tomorrow. You are correct. Hey, hey, what if we all went on a family trip to Vor Jesus' theme park? Jesus Land. SCP-5991. Let's go, uh, let's go read a little bit of Jesus Yums Me. 50th anniversary of Jesus Land. And that was back in 2020. So now it's the 53rd anniversary of Jesus Land. You know, it's a, it's a wonderful park. They did they had something really going there. But it uh, it really turned uh, downhill when they stopped maintaining the stomach acid pools. You know, they gave it they gave it plenty of Alka-Seltzer and that caused it to be less acidic, which meant that the kids could go swimming while the parents had a couple of drinks at the bar. Uh, you know, the water to wine there was fabulous. But then they stopped maintaining the pools and then the kids got all itchy and it wasn't a good thing. That was that was the real beginning of the downfall of Jesus Land. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's funny that the worst thing about that wasn't had to be that you had to get eaten by a Jesus to get into the park. Somehow that wasn't the worst part. Engineer, you can only fight Luffy if you can convince your containment specialist to send you, uh, to send it over to your cell. And I don't think that's pretty likely just based on the current situation that it's still being checked in. So it's going to be a while before it even gets a cell, let alone any sort of transfer. So I think you're just going to have to pass that by. Star Fun Play, thank you for your dono of 10 euros. What do humanoid SCP wear? Do they keep the clothes they had before getting contained? Or do they wear D-class uniform? If it's in the latter, does it supply to child and humanoid anomalies as well? So, interesting question. And my thoughts on it is that they probably get a different color jumpsuit. It's the same jumpsuit, but it's a different color. Uh, my assumption, thinking in my brain plan, I would think it is a... Uh, very kind of dark green. Kind of like a dark green. Uh, let me... Let me look up color. Or let me see SCP Anomaly Jumpsuits. Let me see if somebody has fan art this already. Because no, I don't think they wear orange D-class jumpsuits. Because then they would be easily mistaken. Uh, this person had cannons that they are all gray and white with accent colors. Ooh, they would have to have access colors because we would have to know if they were a Keter or a Euclid uh, because there is no safe uh, humanoid anomaly. If it can think and if it can move, it's Euclid by default. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like there are any good artists doing a humid jumpsuit for anomalous humanoids. But let me look at a color wheel. My first thought is a denim blue uh, jumpsuit, some sort of light, like doctorish blue, light to navy blue. But something about that just doesn't read well. Oh, it's because it would mistake for possible security forces. And so I believe that we're going to give them a dark green, a forest green. That's the word I wanted earlier forest green. Forest green swatch. There we go. Big ol' forest green. Everyone knows what forest green is, but I'm still pulling it up just so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, move it on over in front of this. Boop. Forest green. That is what we're talking about right there. Forest green. Very nice. So that's the color I think their jumpsuits are. Uh, 
Andre, how did the SCP Foundation discover that they're in a fictional universe? Very good question. It comes up very often. In fact, we have our own department of that. The Department of Pataphysics, Andre. The Department of Pataphysics. Pataphysics is the study of narrative layers. So, if I write an SCP, then I am the god of that SCP's universe. And if I write that those SCP researchers write their own fictional story, then they are the gods of that universe, and I am the gods of both universes, and we call these narrative levels. And so pataphysics is our study of that, both below and above. Comes up pretty often in the foundation verse. In fact, we just read yesterday's stream, SCP, I think it's 6584, and that's about us trying to influence the layer above us so they stop writing SCPs and therefore making a mess for us. It's both pataphysics and memetics in that way. Engineer, the fruit tasted bad. Just another reason that you should have waited for instructions and not eaten it. UIU, I hit Sherman's mic firewall. Good. I'm glad the recalibration worked after last night's tomfoolery. Chat, 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 chat. Have I ever played SCP Secret Laboratory? I have not. I played a lot of shooters in my day, but I have not gotten to SCPSL because since I've gotten to that point, uh, <laughs> SCP-SL sounds like SCPSL, which is a super cool, uh, super cool pumpkin spice latte. That's what I think of that game right now. From now on, it's a super cool pumpkin spice latte. Uh, SCPSL. Uh, I need to upgrade. Obviously, you see, I've got a laptop, and while that is good enough for gaming on its own, if I wanted to do gaming streams, then I would need a actual desktop and a rig. And so, in the future. I'm looking forward to getting a rig together so we can do SCP gaming streams. But right now, my technology is just not on par. The overseers need to raise the site budget, is what it is. Gil Dragon Gamer! Hi, Doc! Well, hello back to you, too, and thanks for being a member of the Site42 staff. Dr. Sherman, have you ever gave Josie the cat the infinite pizza box? Of course not! You don't give the cat a pizza! Yeah, give it cat food. Come on now. You want it to get a bellyache? You want it to get constipated? It's a real pain in the cat for all that to happen. And yeah, we're not the ones who deal with it on our side, but whoever does deal with it, I don't rent, I don't envy them. So we pay it forward, because if there's any entities like that on our end, I hope they would do the same. Sir, may I meet the other entities? Why do you keep... Do, no, stay in your cell, engineer. You have not even been tested for what your anomalous abilities now are. You stay put and think about what you've done. Hmm. Sherman, what do you think about the chaos insurgency? I think they're a bunch of dorks. I think that the chaos insurgency... Oh, no, we gotta go get all... We're gonna steal all the anomalies. We're gonna break off because some computer told us to. Losers. Happy holidays to you too, Gil Dragon Gamer, and to every one of you. In case you weren't here at the beginning of the stream, welcome to our eggnog and Yule Log q and I'm doing my best to keep up with the chat. I'm looking at the super chats where I can. And I am reading us some Christmas-themed SCPs while we enjoy our eggnog. Doc, what's your favorite game? So... Uh, my favorite games. Uh, my two biggest favorite games are from the Super Nintendo era, uh, because I am an old. And so that is Earthbound and Super Mario RPG. Love those two games. I think they are top tier. They are my favorite of all time. But then we come to, you know, more modern pieces. I enjoy Bioshock. Uh, Bioshock Infinite is a game I platinumed. I am a huge Fallout series fan. Uh... And I'm a fake fan because I've only played the Bethesda games and New Vegas. 
I have not played the originals. But I do very much enjoy Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. Uh, as flawed as they may be, I love them to death. I love the atmosphere. I've platinum both of those games. And then... Uh, Deathloop was super fun. I think it's an underrated gem, basically. Uh, it was popular for like a very quiet, short bit. But I love a good time loop story. And its little puzzles and setting things up were really good. And I got to it too late, so I never got to try the multiplayer because the servers were basically dead by that time. But I'm sure that was very fun too. Uh, and because of that, yes, I also like Dishonored. Uh, and then right now, I am very much into the Yakuza series. Uh, Yakuza, I discovered it because Yakuza 7 was free and I fell in love with it. And it's uh, Ichiban Kaska is hilarious. And that's why I went back and played Yakuza 0. And now I'm playing Like a Dragon Gaiden. And I'm looking forward to the next game coming out in January. I gotta finish Like a Dragon Gaiden first, but they're so silly all the way. It's lovely, lovely, lovely. Favorite games. Mama Melta, thank you for becoming a level one researcher. Welcome to the Site 42 staff. Engineer, chat, please help. Chat cannot help you from going crazy, engineer. You made a mistake. Jinx Jackal, thank you for your donut of the Site 42 coffers. Make sure to grab yourself a jelly donut on your way past the cafeteria. Check in the chat, check in the chat. GRU Division P, we are defending Dr. Sherman's microphone firewall from the UIU. I, I think I am quite shocked to be receiving aid from the UIU. That is intensely uh, confusing, but uh, anything can happen at the holidays. I appreciate your service. Star Fun Play. I missed this dono. Uh, somewhere I must have. But I'm glad I caught it now. Uh, what makes an SCP worthy of being able to freely wander the site? Our cooperation and not being dangerous the things that makes an SCP allowed to leave itself freely? Or is it something else? So, very good question. Uh, an SCP... There's no SCP that's allowed to wander freely. That is a myth. That is an early misinterpretation of Foundation Protocol. Uh, real quick, Arctic Wolf, thank you for your first donut of the Site42 coffers. Get yourself some avocado toast on your way past the Site Commissary. Uh, instead, there's free time hours during the day for anomalies that are cooperative and unproblematic. If they can prove themselves to be that, if they're not going to try to escape, then they are allowed some free time in the yard. It's, I hate to say it's like a prison, but it's a little like a prison. And they go out and they do free time and fitness and sometimes their activities. We have a lounge and a library. That's where they can go play some games, no internet access. But they can play some games, they can watch some movies and DVDs. Uh, we do not have Netflix or Hulu or any series, uh, streaming ser services like that, because again, no internet. We just heard about that kid who hacked the Grand Theft Auto 6 Intel from an Amazon Fire Stick and a cell phone. So, no, uh, no internet whatsoever for the anomalies. It's just, that's just the way it's gotta be. But we have plenty of enrichment activities and board games. Oh my lord, we have so many board games. Uh, we, uh, you go to the board game store and you see all those crazy advanced board games. That's, uh, that's our, <laughs> that's our anomalies right there. They love them some board games or we make them love them some board games. Engineer, thank you, chat. I'll be free. I'll never go back. I'm free. 
hold on one second. Security, go catch the engineer and uh, use the level three tranquilizers just in case. Yeah, very good. Thank you. All right, no problems there. But uh, to conclude Star Fun Play, yes, uh, it is based on cooperation with tests, with good behavior. They get a certain modicum of freedom. They can also earn uh, enhancements to their quarters. So there's obviously a plain jail cell. It's not really a jail cell. It just seems 100% like a jail cell, but it's not a jail cell. But we can give them some rugs. We can give them an armoire. We can give them some telly as long as they don't act up. As long as they don't act up. Someone in the chat said that 049 was acting up. That's going to lose it some privileges. And it's already lost a lot of privileges. So yes, thank you for the question, Star Fun Play. And make sure to grab yourself a Star Sunday at the commissary on your way out. No, no, no. Oh, go, I promise. That's right. You go back to your cell engineer. Andre, what would happen if SCP-5000 meets SCP-001, the Gate Guardian? So, I think it would be rather difficult for the Gate Guardian to meet 5000, because 5000 exists in a different plane. It exists in the Nuosphere. Uh, the combined intelligence of human thought and ideas. So, because it exists in the Nuosphere, I don't believe that it is capable of interacting with the guard, gate guardian in any conceivable fashion. Meaning that we will not be able to test that hypothetical, I'm sorry to say. Dupless 2004 thank you for your dono, your fifth dono of the Site 42 Coffers. Make sure to go get yourself a hot, I'll say a chili dog. Not even a hot dog, I'll upgrade you to a chili cheese dog over at the commissary. How would the Foundation react to an engineer from the Alien franchise? So, um, you make me interested. Because, to me, an engineer is just an engineer, but in the Alien franchise, is an engineer a specific thing? Okay. Ah, I see. Alright, that's what we're talking about. The engineers, also known as pilots, after the individual discovered on LV-426... Space jockeys, Ossians, or Malakak, were an ancient extraterrestrial species of unknown origin. They possessed some of the most advanced technology in the entire galaxy, with special emphasis placed on their skill in genetic engineering. Credited with the creation of humankind, engineers were believed to have been beneficent creators of sorts who sailed the stars, terraforming primordial celestial bodies and seeding them with the foundation of biological life. As such, they were revered as gods by the species they created. So... I imagine that were this to be the case of a foundation interacting with the engineers, I would imagine that they would, A, need to be a future foundation. We'd have to be in one of the sci-fi canons. And in the sci-fi canons, uh, that would mean to me that probably we would try to learn from them the secrets of our existence. Oh, we have an SCP like this in the 7000s. Oh, 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 oh. Wait a minute. Um, space! Let me go to the 7000s. Let's duplicate that. Run into the 7000s. Bam. All right. I have no idea how to... We, like, travel out into space, into space, into space, into space. And finally, we find our creators. And we have to... Nope, that's not it. Yeah, we go out for space and we go forever and ever and ever and we can't find anything. We can't find anything. And finally we do find something. It's like a race of creators and it like does stuff. And they tell us like, oh, you have to like be, you have to like stay not developed or something like that. Uh, either way, we would probably either get in a fight from them with them or learn from them. I wish I knew what SCP that was. There's just so many of them. 
Arctic Wolf, I believe I have anomalous bad luck. You know, that is something that you can probably get solved if you go over to the uh, SCP-7000 division. They dealt with luck pretty extensively. I am certain they should have some cure for that Arctic Wolf. Engineer, why am I a woman? Well, that is a, that's a very interesting question. I do not have any idea why. Is this metaphysical? Like, that you were born a woman and you need to understand your purpose from your chosen deity of choice? Is this that the eating the fruit made you a woman? I don't know. Uh, this is, there's a lot of different roads this could go. I'm going to need more information. I'm back out of containment. I'm running straight to get for the cafeteria. Are you kidding me? I'm sitting here con, uh, confounding on the morality of your womanhood, and you're just using that as a reason to run away. Oh, you're going back in your box, engineer. Rude, 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 rude. Sherman, what do you think about the Foundation's opinion is... What do you think the Foundation's opinion is about the town of Night Vale from the podcast Welcome to Night Vale? What the Foundation do if it were in the same universe? So to my knowledge, Lanchester Arts, I think that the city of Night Vale is pretty well self-contained versus... Uh, I mean, besides Desert Bluffs. I think it's... They got that uh, thing going on. Let me let me go to the wiki on Night Vale itself. Radio show. Oh, wow, that's a big... Thanks, Wikipedia. I understand you want money, but sheesh. Host, main character, narrator. Night Vale. Tell me about the town. Tell me about the town. All right, Fandom Wiki. We'll have to trust you on this one. Fictional town of Night Vale. Faithless old woman. Dog park, recreation center, invisible clock tower, owl records. Episodes. Featured character, home, explore. Main page, Night Vale, most viewed. Podcast. World of Night Vale. Okay, timeline. Ancient times, there are gods. Uh, woman from Italy, distant prince, glow cloud. All right, let, let's look at actual Night Vale. Where's Night Vale? Old Night Vale Opera House, okay. Cecil Palmer visits Europe in the late 1800s. City Council. Future site of Night Vale and Desert Bluffs is not yet more than a large featureless desert. Okay, but now I can click Night Vale as a city and that's what I wanted. Friendly desert community where the sun is hot, the moon is beautiful, and mysterious lights pass overhead while everyone pretends to sleep. History. Life, organizations, notable locations, communities, parks, museums, businesses, roads, residents. Nothing about anomalies here. American Southwest, empty desert near Desert Bluffs. So, pretty simple. I believe that we uh, do not need to do much to contain Night Vale because it is, seems pretty self-contained in the desert. I'm sure we would keep a perimeter and detour roads that go toward it permanently. And it's been around for a while, so that's probably been the case for a while. Uh, any surveyors who go into the area, travelers, we got to turn them around. But probably we just, uh, we study it. I wouldn't be shocked if there's a resident of Night Vale and Desert Bluffs too that are simply Foundation agents who are just keeping tabs and sending intel out. Yeah, that, that tracks. I think that's a pretty good headcanon there. Thank you for the question. That was a good one. Engineer, no, I think the fruit made me a woman. Why do I have dragon wings now? So a woman dragon 
Well, I think you ought to be on the lookout for any uh, donkeys then. Might be a uh, bit of a situation you get yourself into, engineer. I'm not cleaning up that mess. We, I'm flying, oh, I'm going towards a wall. That's about as how I expected that to go for you. So I saw the 096 pick and lived. Am I an SCP? Arctic Wolf, if that's the case, then you only have so much time left. But instead, I believe that the picture you saw was fraudulent. Maybe an artistic interpretation, because only the real thing counts. Andre, if Team Fortress 2 PC game were an SCP, how would it be contained? So, we have plenty of anomalous PC games. And we keep them contained by keeping them off downloading sites. And so we have our web trackers keep track of the game and take them down and report them every time they get uh, put back up. That's how we manage that anyways. Now, oh, real quick, looking at the chat, we are just close to tripling the amount of viewers with our likes. So if you're a new viewer and you haven't liked yet, go ahead and add those likes so we hit 240, uh, 243 and we more than triple our viewer count with likes. That would be a very good achievement for the Site42 staff. Team Fortress 2 PC game were an SCP. So once it were actively contained, that would be when we would start to uh, run tests on a version of it in our on-site computers, disconnected from the network, or maybe with a LAN setup of several computers that can interact, but not with the outside world or our systems. We're not making that mistake again and letting an anomalous game get into our systems. That would be not ideal. And that's how we would handle that. Uh, very easy to keep it from the public and to keep testing on it. No problems there. Ow, my head. Anyways, I'm in the cafeteria. Did you break through the wall? Do I need to call our super cool, our super carpentry, our super carpentry pros? Do I need to call our super carpentry pros because you broke a wall? Rude. Very rude. You'll never get me alive. Well, we could get you dead. That doesn't bother me none. You've caught another mess today by disobeying orders. Ow, I don't feel so good. That's what you get for breaking a wall and making me call the super carpentry pros. Why do I keep running into stuff? You tell me. You can just sit comfortably in your cell and you'd have no problems. Instead, you're turning into a dragon and breaking walls. I think it's pretty rude. Lanchester Arts, thank you for answering. Sherman, if you're able to answer another question of mine, what would the foundation think of the Magnus Institute? So the Magnus Institute are very interesting because I believe that we would uh, work with them from time to time. They seem non-anomalous to me so far, and they seem to be studiers of the anomalous. I, they're not as good at it as we are. They're, you know, those stuffy Brits. They're going to do what they're going to do. But, you know... Well, we probably work with them from time to time, trade information. Uh, they're not really containing the anomalies as well much as just logging them. So at the end of the day, they're not as, I wouldn't consider them as competent as we need them to be. Oh, the view looks nice from up here. Get in the box, engineer. Get in the box. You are, you are ruining Christmas. You are ruining Christmas with your antics. Oh no, Reggie escaped from the box again. Oh no, 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 no. Reggie, Reggie earned a day pass for the holiday. Don't you, don't you worry about that. Reggie is taking a nice little adventure. Uh, we got him, uh, we gave him... We gave him a little scavenger hunt to keep him occupied. Right now, he's probably halfway into the archives at the bottom of the lowest basement of the Foundation site. And when he gets there, he's going to find out that the clue is hidden in the last book of the last initial of the third section. So it's not at the very, very end. He's going to have to go back to the third section, which means he's going to have to go all the way back up to the top floor of the archive again. And we tricked him. And then he's gonna he's gonna be going up and down there for a while. We got him covered. I'll never get in the oh, I'm ruining Christmas. See? Get in the box and we'll even wrap it very nicely like Christmas. 
There you go. See, it's right there. Oh my word. We're almost up to 100 viewers and only 250 likes. Site 42 staff, hit that like button. Let's triple our likes to our viewers. We got this. Let's hit that 300. We're getting close. Vixi Victatius, are children able to work at the foundation? Asking for a friend, of course. So it is, you know, we have researcher James, age five, but he, he was grandfathered in. It was a whole time travel thing. He was a normal guy and he got de-aged and he's still acting like a five-year-old, but we still let him write documents because we kind of feel bad for him. And then, you know, we do have a, we do need, Children D-Class to test the anomalies that only affect children. So, uh, if you know any good uh, hangouts for homeless children, we're always hiring. Oh, engineer, stop, 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 stop being sad. Just, uh, you're not ruining Christmas. You're just, you're just being a hassle. And if you, if you get back in your box, we'll send you some eggnog and you'll have a Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. It's Christmas after all. You can't ruin Christmas. It's impossible. Christmas is amazing. It's unruinable. Unruinable. 260 likes and 90 viewers. You get 10 more likes. We will triple it. Or I guess 13 because it's 91. But hit those likes. Is SCP-096 racist? No! It, it, it doesn't talk. It doesn't have opinions. I mean, it, I, feasibly, it could be. It's never said anything, so we couldn't really tell the difference. Um, that is a situation. Engineer, engineer, what do you need to not give me sad faces in my chat? You can't be sad on Christmas. There's rules against that. And we at the Foundation love rules. We follow them. They're important to us. So... Uh, no, no sad faces on Christmas. We gotta, we gotta turn that smile on an upside down. And I mean, no, turn the frown upside down. Keep the smile. Ah. What would happen if two fifty four is placed in SCP three thousand eight? Uh, Andre, I do not know what two fifty four is. Let me have a look. See, look, see. Duplicate two fifty four. I don't know this anomaly anymore. What's it called? Employee of the month. What does the employee of the month do for us? SCP-254 is a rectangular wooden plaque measuring 22 centimeters by 30 centimeters and weighing approximately 1.5 kilograms. On the front of the black is an empty brass picture holder, as well as a printed metal plate with a black background in gold colored letters reading Employee of the Month. But what does it do? Uh, it was where it was discovered. It's hung on a wall of a work period of four or more people. 254-1 will appear soon afterward. 254-1 will arrive either at the end of the next designated break period or at the beginning of the following work shift. Incorporeal, human of variable gender, age, name, race, and appearance. Able to manipulate objects in the manner similar to that of a normal human of average strength and coordination. Will adopt the appearance and persona of a model employee. Image of 254 appears to be an 8 by 10 glossy photograph. Fills, photograph fills the empty picture holder. Change until 254 is moved to a new location. Uh, photograph cannot be removed from the picture holder by any known means, but it can be torn or ripped. Doing so in an aggressive or purposeful manner results in a violent reaction from 254-1. Cheerful demeanor at all times. Able to carry on conversations about the weather, traffic, nightly TV shows, sports, or other such topics. Discuss topics of which present individuals have no knowledge because it wants to be a nice guy. Assigned to work in the air. Do not appear alarmed by 254-1's incorporeal nature. Meet all tasks quickly and efficiently. Effective employee until the end of the following month. After the month has passed, if it is not removed, it will begin to degrade in performance, beginning with an unhelpful attitude and forgetfulness. If it is not removed, it will become worse and worse employee until fired. Firing can be represented by removing the plaque for the wall or informing 254-1 of its termination. Hmm. 
Well, it seems like it would just be a pretty good IKEA employee for a month before it got weird. And since the IKEA employees are not what we like, I wouldn't uh, be about that. I don't think we should do that. I'm keeping my head in the wall. I'm keeping my head in the wall. I'm keeping my head in the wall. Well, engineer, if keeping your head in the wall makes you happy on Christmas, who am I to stop you? How about we just uh, put a nice little uh, festive Christmas wreath around your head and then everyone will have a happy Christmas. There we go. This is not a question, but I hope you have a good day and night and week and year. Never give up on yourself because you're an amazing person. Keep going on your YouTube channel. Well, thank you, Zen Try Hard. I appreciate your uh, appreciation very much. How would you eat a baby if you could eat a baby? How would you eat a baby if you could eat a baby? Why, why are we trying to eat a baby? Does anyone want to eat a baby? Nobody that I know wants to eat a baby. Unless it's veal. That is where, uh, that is where people want to eat babies. But they're baby cows, but it's still uh, a baby. So yeah, if I had to pick one, it would be that. Because then it's a... Not a human baby. That's the one I choose for that reason. Yes. This is what Sherman wished for for Christmas. All I want for Christmas for those goddamn trees to scream. Wouldn't it be nice? All of our dreams. All of our dreams are held in all of our hearts. And all of our dreams have the power to make the tree scream. Spirit bomb of tree screaming. Give me strength to make the tree scream. Ha! We'll give it a try next time. That's a new test to try out. Oh, hey, a rat. I'm naming you Ratty. You live your best life, Ratty. I've been hearing some gossip around the foundation of an SCP negative one. Is it true? Well, I know we have an SCP-001, or multiple of them, and I know we have an SCP-0000. Uh, so the question then becomes... Is there an SCP-1? And how would you denote an SCP-1 on the SCP wiki? I guess the quickest way to do so is to go SCP-1. Yeah, the thing is when you look up SCP-1, you just get SCP-1. It doesn't actually... Uh, so let me put an SCP negative one. There we go. Negative zero zero one is in the sandbox. Negative one in amino. Negative one in amino. So no, there is no SCP negative one. Oh, oh, wait a minute. SCP negative one dash J. Containment class, safe, correction, thaumiel, correction, neutralized. Special containment procedures. SCP-1-J was to have been kept in a containment cell approximately 5 meters on all sides and protected by 20 members of Mobile Task Force Navla-24, codename Ice Bears, at all times. Description. SCP-1-J designated a Krylon brand aerosol can containing approximately a half liter of a paint-like substance designated SCP-1-J-beta. This paint-like substance was approximately 20% of the mass in, of ordinary paint. In coloration, the SCP-1-J-beta substance was colorless and odorless. It was approximately 100% transparent. When applied to a surface or mixed into a substance, the object was able to be seen clearly through with the same diffraction as the surrounding environment, be it air, water, or vacuum, 
as if it didn't exist at all. How this process occurred is unknown. S show SCP negative one dash J beta testing log. That's not terribly long. The SCP negative one dash J dash beta substance is to be applied to a wooden plank. Result, the wooden plank became invisible. Ooh. Notes, wooden plank incinerated due to being a tripping hazard. Parameters. The substance was to be stirred into water. The water became invisible. Notes. Water exposed to the substance tastes like an ordinary paint water. Parameters. The substance is to be applied to a sheet of lead approximately one meter in height and width and approximately five centimeters in thickness. After the substance has been applied, it is to be tested for radiation blocking capabilities. Res pardon. Result. Lead became invisible. Notes. D-class personnel reported feeling itchy and lightheaded while the lead sheet was stood between her and a sample of cry Krypton 85, approximately 10 kilograms in weight. Cause of symptoms unknown. Parameters. The substance is to be applied to a steel M1 helmet. After the substance has been applied, it is to be tested for ballistic protection capabilities. Result. Helmet became invisible. Notes. No paint flaked off of the helmet being shot repeatedly with pistol caliber ammunition. Helmet did not appear to be dented from tactile examination. D-class sustained, sustained concussion. You know, I don't really think we need to have a D-class wear the helmet to test it, but uh, not my project, not my problem. That's what I say. Me, uh, I'm sitting up straighter now. I'm going to give you guys a little more. There we go. Perfect. Parameters. The substance is applied to a printed copy of a memetic kill agent. After the substance has been applied, it is to be tested for memetic kill properties. Result. The meme became invisible. Notes. D-class tester reported no effect save for confusion. D-class terminated by facility guard anyway to maintain regular quota. Uh, good. Good policy. That's exactly how we do it. Not wasteful at all. Parameters. The substance is to be applied to the body of SCP-096, the shy guy. After the substance has been applied, it is tested for reaction. Result, 096 became invisible. Notes, D-class tester told to stare in direction of SCP-096, but was not attacked. Upon the success of this test, 096 has been released out into the wild due to no longer posing any threat whatsoever and being completely harmless. Substance reclassified to Thaumiel. Parameters, the substance is to be applied to SCP-049, the plague doctor. After the substance has been applied, it is to be tested for reaction. Result, 049 became invisible. Notes. The present location of 049 is unknown. Several staff have dropped dead and become zombies. It is unknown if these phenomena are linked. What what site is this at? What 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 site is doing this? Parameters. The substance is to be applied to a piece of paper containing the written designation of the entity symbolized by a no 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 no. I'm not falling for that again. Not falling for that. It it's its name is Morse code. That's all we say about it. After the substance has been applied, it has to be tested for provocation ability. Result, paper became invisible. Notes, the entity manifested inside of the testing chamber became confused and left, but not before grabbing the D-class tester present anyway. We're pretty sure it doesn't know about this entry. Parameters, the paint was to be applied to SCP-nothing-J. Result, the object was affected. Notes, write later. Parameters. The substance is to be applied to approximately one pill of SCP-500, the panacea. After the substance has been applied, it is to be tested for efficacy. Result. The pill was invisible. Notes. Location of pill unknown. Possibly dropped in transfer from testing chamber. Wasteful. These people are wasteful. Parameters. The substance is to be applied to the body of SCP-347, the invisible woman. After the S substance has been applied, it is to be tested for reaction. Result unknown. Notes. Researcher K has reported that his car keys went missing sometime during the test. Possibly leakage of paint. You know, there are some people who say lol foundation is a slur, but I, I think things are getting pretty lol foundation around here. Hmm. Parameters. The substance is to be applied to the body of an instance of SCP-363, not centipedes. After the substance has been applied, it is to be tested for reaction, ostensibly. 
Result, ostensibly, the 363 instance became invisible. Notes, due to no light touching the instance, the instance ostensibly mutated rapidly and breached containment. Ostensibly, 12 dead, and ostensibly, 53 wounded. Location unknown. Oh, yep, here we go. Here we go, doing the stupidest thing we could possibly do. Parameters. The substance is, is to be applied to the body of SCP-682, hard-to-kill reptile. After the substance has been applied, it is to be tested for reaction. Result. SCP-682 instance became invisible. Notes. Due to no light touching the instance, the instance ostensibly mutated rapidly and breached containment. Oh, no, no, no. 682 is no longer detected. It is presumed to be neutralized. D-class position in the testing chamber also disappeared. The reason for this is unknown. Parameters. The S substance is to be applied to the body of SCP-173, the statue. After the substance has been applied, it is to be tested for reaction. Result. Not applicable. See below. Notes. SCP-1-J has run out of SCP-1-J-beta for use in testing. SCP-1-J reclassified to neutralized. Think. 343. We were going to put invisibility paint on the statue we have to see or it kills us. Who is, is Researcher K the head of this testing? Cause no, C come on. Go what, what kind of, Yeah, overall, I think this one is, uh, I like it. All right, I will give that one an updoot. Ooh, which brings it to 50 updoots. All right. So, that was a long way of saying, yes, we do have a rumored SCP-1-J, but it has been neutralized. There you go. All right. Oh, we have a... Super chats and the chat is flying. No, Ratty, redacted. Ratty, Ratty gone. Ratty back. Engineer, you just you just keep living your life in with your friend Ratty in there. You you enjoy that wall. Merry Christmas to you. Andre, does the Wanderer's Library have a story of Santa Claus? That is a great question. And it's something we should look for on the Wanderer's Library real quick which I hear is working a lot better than the SCP wiki right now. Apparently it has been spared from Wikidots' problems. Santa Claus, Wanderers, Library. Collection of extraordinary ties hidden from ordinary eyes. Is this Santa related? Control F, Santa. All right, Santa is mentioned twice in this article, but was your question about it being contained? A story of Santa Claus, okay. So yes, uh, Andre, the answer to your question is called Toys on the Wanderer's Library. And it is a story with Santa talking. Uh, looks like a note from Santa. Beyond that. Oh no. Oh no. There's a tale on the SCP wiki called Santa Claus Procedures Part 1. Does it have a part two? Part three. Oh, it goes to part two. It goes to part two and then we go down. <sighs> okay, so part three hasn't been written yet. Uh, ooh, Zal Cryptid, excellent artist. If you're not following Zal on Twitter, you should check that out. Zal does good art for SCP stuff. 
So yeah, there's a two-part Santa Claus procedures on the SCP Wiki if you want to check that out as well. We have a lot of Santa going on on SCP and Wanderer's Library, both it seems. Ratty gone, I will get revenge for Ratty. Casually beats Little Dragon. Are you the Little Dragon? You are, you are the Dragon, though. I am very confused by your situation, Engineer, but I wish you the best. Lanchester Arts, thank you for answering my former questions. Uh, another is, what would the Foundation think of the Winchesters? Do you think they work with them or something else due to how the brothers deal with things? So, as a fan of the Supernatural series myself, uh, to the point where I played a D&D &D game based in the Dresden universe, and my character was basically Dean Winchester, um, from that I would say that the Foundation is very much more like the men of letters in like the secrecy aspect and the technological aspect and all the research and stuff. And so they probably would look down on the hunters. Uh, these uh, podunk uh, bumpkins messing things up for the people who are smart. And with that in mind, also, I think it'd be really fun. Uh, one thing the foundation verse doesn't have that it could be fun to have is a... Uh, on the ground hunters network because the para watch wiki they are the closest thing we have to that but they're just a bunch of nerds online on a message board sharing what are scary monsters and they don't know if they're real or not it would be cool to have like some independent hunters network doing the uh, ground level anomalous threats that'd be cool javi god i'm javi my friends love your videos well thank you very much javi and your friends Honestly, SCP-4666 is a mood. What does that mean, Keo? What does that mean? How is SCP-4666 a mood? How is the Yule Man, who abducts children, murders their families, and turns their bones into toys, or very specifically, has the other children turn the children's bones into toys? How is that a mood? What mood would that be, K.O.? What mood would that be? I think it's 4666 in disguise. I think we need to go to its location, ping that IP right now, and hunt it down. I don't trust it. Random Fun God, thank you for your dono to the Site42 coffers. First one of the night, so make sure you pick yourself up some Funyuns at the Site42 Commissary on your way by. Dr. Sherman, I love your content. Please recognize me. Oh, and also, can you say Ben Dover? Well, I mean, Ben Dover is a very good friend of the stream. He might be a little behind the times, but we always stand a nice, solid showing from Ben Dover. How many times have you tried to make the tree scream? Oh, if only I could count that high. Oh, if only I could count the ways I have tried to make that pernicious pine scream. But it's too many. It's too many and still not enough. And so we continue. And we will continue. Until it screams. Thank you for your donation. No, that was just a question. Thank you for your question. I answered that one for free because it was important to know. Hey, Sherman, after being greenlit on the official wiki dot, is it immediately for the draft phase or should I wait a few days? The SCP in question is my original idea. So, the SCP writing process in a very quick, brief nutshell. Number one, you gotta sign up for the SCP wiki, and that means you gotta sign up for wiki dot first. People forget that. You gotta sign up for wiki dot and have an account, then you gotta get an account for the SCP branch next. And you gotta get a membership for the sandbox. Uh, people don't often uh, remember that. So that's three memberships you got to have just to start your uh, process. Then you get your idea greenlit. 
and your idea being greenlit, uh, once it's done, that means that someone said, hey, that's a pretty good idea. I've never heard of it on the wiki. You could probably do something creative with that. That's good stuff. Then you start writing. And so you write your first draft. And then once you're done with your first draft, you probably write your second draft after that. You edit it. You make sure it's clean. And once you think that the article is good enough for posting, that's when you show it to someone for crit. You want to give someone, whether it's a friend who likes writing with some expertise or a friend in the SCP community, uh, you want to make sure whoever's giving you crit is qualified to give you crit. If they're just going to tell you whatever you want to hear, if they don't know anything about writing or if they don't know anything about SCP, probably not going to be the best critter. But once you have a qualified critter, you give them the best possible version of your article and then they give you notes and you pick if you want to do things with that or not. And you go and you fix up your article to the best of your ability. You want to do maybe two, three rounds of crit if you're a first time author. Uh, that means maybe you get one person the first time, change it, another person and the same person. You get it to a couple people. And that way you get a good amount of feedback. You can also use the feedback forums if you don't have any friends who can write. That's not uncommon. Not many people are writers. Uh, so you can check that out, get your critique done, and once you have a final copy, then you post it. Uh, t -t -t so yeah, that's a quick, quick and dirty version of the posting process. Random Fun God. Oh, thanks for, oh my God, thanks for recognizing me. Can you say your opinion on British people and tea? So, I love tea. I love tea from all sorts of the world. I love various flavors of tea. Uh, big tea drinker myself. Uh, for British people, I am mostly on the positive. I enjoy British television. I enjoy British comedies. I enjoy... British uh, dramas and stuff like that. A lot of the entertainment value is good. I think the food gets a bad rap. I think there is good British food out there. People just need to pay attention and get the right stuff. Um, the only British people I don't like are the TERFs. I am uh, against the TERFs. They're not fun. Uh, I don't think I don't think go far enough to call it Turf Island because that's a that downplays the actual good allies who were there. But that's what we roll with. Scrolling down the chat. Andre, what are your thoughts on SCP-4010? Well, let me find out my thoughts on SCP-4010. First, I go to Series 5. Then I scroll down to the 41s. Then I was wrong and I scroll back up because it was 4010. Attempt to look at what we accomplished. Welcome to SkipNet. Please submit your logging credentials. March 18th, 2023. Matey Sailor. Have a nice day, Madeline Sailor. Do proposition. Select a single individual for project. Kronos. An attempt to establish a complete chronological timeline. You can choose to climb, but by accepting you are agreeing to complete confidentiality. And the project... And, okay. More time travel tonight. How interesting. It seems to be a theme. Of this and the Lennox Mutual show. But... Time is a very prominent concept this holiday season. You know, we should think about time. We have a limited amount, but we don't know how much that is. It could be altered by tragedy or by good health keeping. It could be longer. But it's the one thing that we all have the same thing we deal with, is dealing with time. And using our time wisely. What does using our time wisely mean? It means uh, enjoying life. It means helping others, because helping others enriches their lives, and usually they'll enrich yours right back. Very interesting. A lot to think about with time this season. Anyways, back to 4010. I need time. How urgent is this? <sighs> Very. I see I accept. Research establishing a timeline of documented history as complete as possible, including anomalous events. For this, you have the entire Foundation database will be unlocked to you with the acceptance of files that have already been ruled out as unrelated and or possibly kind of hazardous. O one will be locked until you ask permission. I suggest you have the basics by then, as it may complicate things a little. 
Project one, two, three, write a new message. That's a lot. Okay, that's un, 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 un. Conducting research, basic setup, didn't sleep, just started the recording, proper day. Must have gone through like of 100 SCP files or 50, running down, have a problem, years don't match. Response finally came, reality shift, Dr. Scranton, why are you doing this to me? Did you react? So how did you invent the reality anchor uh, nearly 70 years before you were born? Are there more of you, your relative? How do I, I should have a set another date in the beginning, the founding of our foundation, how did I miss that? Time travel, time travel, going down. So much going on. Wow, we have at least five giant slimes. Taking a break on day 23, day 30, 106. Magic, thaumatology. Need another break on day 50. Cognito hazard. Two months have passed to reach 20%. I am starting to appreciate the random SCP button. Wait, the GOC did what? A chair? They put a chair into a wood chipper? Am I getting this right? That's hilarious. Uh, I mean, it is horrible that we have to contain this anomaly now. Uh, 23.99. So it's just, it's just going over all of the uh, SCPs. It's like a retrospective. Going down. Stagnating. Lots of going down. I mean, I love this meta garbage, so I can already tell you without finishing it that I probably like this because I love when things reference things and I run down a... And it looks like this person's going insane, which is also really funny. And going down. Ah, a bunch of horror writers. <laughs> How rude. You're going to have to do it again. No, no, it's a loop. It's a loop. How strange. Even at a skim, I know that's pretty cool. So thank you, Andre, for pointing that out to me. Much appreciated. Sir, may I become a scientist? Sir, I have a gun now. Engineer, you need to calm down with all of this monkey business you're doing, man. Oh, my word. Uh, Lord D, uh, you still haven't gone through your booking as an anomaly. You just turned anomalous by eating a fruit against orders, so you're gonna have to, uh, wait on that whole transfer to a scientist. Sherman, you are an absolute pine cone, an insult where I'm from. If you think I'll scream anytime soon, the only thing you could do to make me scream would be to rip away each and every leaf I have off. That's just what you want me to think. I'm not falling for your tricks. That would be a waste of a test. I'm scratching that test off the list. We had it planned, but now we're not going to because we know that's what you want us to do. That's we're not falling for your funny tricks tree. <laughs> What would happen if you put SCP-173 in one of those hydraulic press videos? So, uh, there's nothing that says that 173 is undestroyable. In fact, concrete rebar hydraulic press. Hydraulic press versus concrete and reinforced concrete. Let's have a little, uh... Let's get to the good stuff. So this is what happens if we put hydraulic press into 
There you go. We're doing research like real scientists right now. Well, that wasn't difficult at all. Meanwhile, and by the way, shout out to YouTuber Crazy Hydraulic Press with 1.13 million subscribers. That's who that video is from. Let's make sure we give them some love. And if you need a new Hydraulic Press YouTuber, that's who we just witnessed a couple seconds of there. And on top of that, if we go to QIYI Tech, Kiwi Tech, Kiwi Tech, then we can get rebar being crushed by a hydraulic press. And so let's get to the part where they turn that sucker on. There we go. Well, that didn't crush very well at all. Did we already give up on the rebar? Man, y'all were uh, pretty easy with that. Spring, eight ball, soda bottle. Man, so let's uh, see that one more time. Rebar just did not care about being crushed. So, what that tells me, uh, thank you, Kiyi Tech. We just discovered that SCP-173 would not be destroyed by a uh, press like that. Now, here's the thing. While I wonder, I'm going to look one more time for rebar. Because we know the concrete would be destroyed. We got that far. Rebar. Hydraulic. Press. So that's the one we watched. Is there another one? It looks like we'd have to use a different hydraulic tool, like a hydraulic vise or a metal bender. But so depending on the size of the hydraulic press and the pressure and the angle of the press, we could bend the rebar. But I mean, it depends on if the anomalous energy uh, factor is in the concrete or the rebar or both. Maybe destroying the concrete would be enough to deactivate the anomaly. Maybe it's in the rebar itself and the concrete is just a case. Um, maybe it's a Frosty the Snowman situation where it was the spray paint that brought it to life. But regardless, uh, we would not do that test because we would not destroy an anomaly because then we can't research it anymore. It's outside of foundation protocols anyways but an interesting hypothetical in case it had to go down. Thank you, Dream Dev YouTube, for that question. Uh, Dr. Zez, out of all of the SCPs you've written, which is your favorite? Oh, that's a tough question, because obviously I love my little SCP boys. And so, author page... If I were to consider my SCPs at a ranking, probably, hmm. So I know for a fact that Jim Look is not my favorite. And I know for a fact that Hair Growth by Dado are not my favorite. I like them both, of course. They're just not like that top tier SCP of my stories. Uh, Cake by the Ocean is not one of my favorites. Uh, it's between Death of the Author, What I Did for Love, Ignorance is Bliss, and The Ballad of Jim Biggio. So between 3086, 2700-EX, Ignorance is Bliss is a Tale, and then 5886. And I think as iconic as George the Chinchilla is, I don't think that would be my number one. What I did for love has a lot of good feelings, but I think I like the good feelings in Jim Biggio more personally. So I think that knocks out what I did for love, even though it's my highest rated article. And between Ignorance is Bliss and The Ballad of Jim Biggio, 5088, or 5886, I think I would, obviously every time you ask me this, my reasoning is gonna change. But today, I think my answer is going to go with 
The Ballad of Jim Biggio. And I'm basing that solely because in a head-to-head -head between Ignorance is Bliss and The Ballad of Jim Biggio, there's one or two things in Ignorance is Bliss that I would fix if I went back and wrote it. But for Jim Biggio, I can't think of anything I would want to adjust. So that is where I'm at on that today. It might change next time you ask me. Back to the chat. Dr. Breaker, may I have a snow, may I make a snowstorm so we can have a white Christmas? Well, I would say that if you wanted to do that, if you are at a foundation site, and if you are making sure not to cause a weather pattern issue with the locals, then I don't think that that's a problem. Just don't, you know, break the veil. We don't want the locals getting on, get, catching on to us. Madster, thank you for your $5 first dono to the channel. Uh, message retracted, so I uh, thank you for the goodness of your heart there, I guess. Uh, make sure to grab yourself some mulled cider on your way past the commissary. Yurichi. I can eat through anything, Dr. Sherman, not limited to anything. I've eaten bedrock. Well, that's just like Mr. Hunger, the SCP. SCP, is it Mr. Hunger or Mr. Hungry? Mr. Hunger. Uh, Mr. Hungry is his name, SCP-913. So yeah, we know how to deal with that. Uh, don't worry about that, you're fine. Timekeep. Hello, Dr. Sherman. Have an amazing holiday, sir. You too, Timekeep. You too. Admiral Celine, interesting question. Would it be possible for a person to be digitized, i.e. through some prank by gamers against weed? How would the SCP deal with them? So this has happened uh, from time to time. Uh, certain anomalies have this power for sure. Uh, one of them is uh, GOAT VR, which is 5045. But that's just a video game that eats you. And so... Uh, I'm sorry, what? No. No. No, there's not a Patreon for this. You're not real. Phew. Okay. It's unrelated to... Oh. Oh, leaving that. Whoops. Oops. Bad choice. Hmm. Where was I? SCP-5045 will digitize you and turn you into a goat, which isn't fun for you. Um, there is an SCP first-person shooter that, like, turned four people into game characters who teleport around... Uh, and they kill people in real life because they think they're in a game. And so I'm trying to find, uh, yeah, SCP-2639, video game violence. Relates to a following that manifests as a one kilometer cubic volume wherein anomalous entities and objects 
materialize, then dematerialize one to two hours later. The imperceptible barrier around 2639 prevents instances of 2639-A from leaving the area. Three humanoid entities equipped with anomalous weaponry and armor. Each entity exhibits superhuman speed, strength, endurance, resistance to injury, and perceives no pain or discomfort. Uh, this, yeah, it's three people who got digitized into a game and are teleported around the world, and they're like, they think they're playing a game, but they can't get out, and they're actually killing people. And then we turn them into a task force. Uh, it's a really good story. So enjoy uh, 2639. It's a very good read. Uh, so that's two examples of SCPs that digitize you that aren't even involving gamers against weed. So that's something to think about there. Kenny McCormick, is there any cat SCPs? Well, you got uh, Josie the half cat. That's an easy one. And then there's the cat that falls down the well. And there's a uh, bunch of other ones like that. Uh, if you type in SCP spacebar cat into Google, you will find them all. Master, welcome back. Sorry, I forgot to write my question in the last one. Oof. Yo, Dr. Sherbin, what's the best way to escape a containment cell? Asking for a friend. The best way to escape a containment cell is to not escape the containment cell. Any escaping of the containment cell is suboptimal. So no, your friend is staying in a box. What would happen if online images of SCP-096 is released in public? Andre, a lot of people would perish, which we don't want. And we would have to go bag it again and put it back, which is annoying and cost inhibitive. And then we would need to uh, scrub that image from the internet. That would be the uh, three prongs of fixing the issue. We are down to the last 10 to 20-ish minutes of our Dr. Sherman Christmas Eve office hours. So make sure that you uh, get your questions in Super chats in and such quick as we wind down this offer hours. Can I call a furry an SCP? Your average furry is just a normal human being. Therefore, they are not actually anomalous in any way. So no, you can't call them an SCP in good faith. However, we do have our SCP uh, furry division, the mobile task furries. And we had to form the mobile task furries with their tactical fursuits because of SCP-3312. Wikidot, cooperate with me. Wikidot. Wikidot. Gosh darn it, Wikidot. Three, three, one, two. There we go. Titled, Ooh, Ooh, What's This? And this is a amateur entrepreneurial group, Accelerate the Future, henceforth referred to as ATF. And they made a meme that turns people into furries, but it usually breaks their ba brain and makes them feral. So, uh, and that happened to the creator of the meme too. And that's why the mobile task furries with their tactical fursuits had to go take them down because the meme didn't affect real furries. Ergo, they, uh, pardon, had problems there. Is there a gay SCP? Well, the SCP community is very LGBTQ friendly. So there are a lot of articles that are gay in one way or another. Now, it's not nearly that many as the angry chuds of the internet will make you believe. But yes, it's an inclusive community and people like to write stories about their own experience and of the creators that are LGBTQ, they write what they know. Um, let me see if real quick, without getting into a situation that is terrible. Da -na 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 -na. 
No, I did not mean that. Google, do what I said. So in the ship in a bottle canon, Clef and Kondraki are dating. Um, Jude from Gamers Against Weed, Theo Wilson from Wilson's Wildlife Solutions are both trans. Uh, Clef is ace in the uh, ship in a bottle canon. Researcher James Talleran and Draven Kondraki are dating in most of their appearances. Iris Dark of Marshall Carter and Dark is trans. Abel is uh, aromantic asexual, that's SCP-076, doesn't recognize gender or attraction. 113 and 6113 are both uh, transitioning anomalies. Uh, and that's just the beginning. There's not like a, oh, uh, 3540 is the Grim Reaper is gay. Uh, so yeah, there's a fair amount. It's not limited, it's not a majority, because that's not what most people write about for funsies, but the ones who do, the ones who do. Going back to the chat. Dr. Sherman is an SCP. Well, if that's the case, you can't prove anything, so shh. Ta ta da ta 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 da ta da da ta ta da ta 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 Wayne Glensky, bro, some naked guy at my yard, TFI do. You should do a reverse dot, you should do a home alone. You gotta pull a home alone right now, you gotta set up some traps before he gets in. You gotta arm yourself, protect yourself. Uh, you are in imminent danger, so uh, yeah, do not let that old man in. Otherwise, uh, this, is, this is his time of year. It's not gonna go, for, not gonna go good for you. It's gonna be a bad time. We do not wanna have a bad time. What if Josie the half cat finds its other half? Would they hang out? I cannot imagine that to be the case. Uh, but I don't, I mean, I mean, I guess they smell the same. So they would, like, be biologically, uh, like, how cats are friends with their siblings, except when they're not. It's up in the air. Plus, it's not like Josie's back half can, like, do the same social interactions that the front half can. I mean, maybe they can still, like, rub on each other side to side and stuff. Cat friends. Cat friends. Going down the chat, going down the chat. Is the tree screaming yet? No, it's not. And we're pissed about that. Dr. Sherman, I am an anomaly. What are you going to do about it? You know, you said that several times in this stream, insert name here, 684, and I gotta tell you, it's a bad idea confessing in a foundation stream. The mobile task forces are right outside your location. I've been ignoring you till now. That way you were not ready for them, but now they're ready for you. Have fun. Oh, you just jumped down.
Dr. Sherman, can SCPs have kids? So, I guess, I mean, there are plenty of anomalous animals and human beings, and they are perfectly capable of uh, pregnancy and childbearing, the same as non-anomalous humans. Uh, whether they pass on their anomaly or not, that is uh, not at all well studied because we normally don't let it happen in our viewing. Uh, so, I mean, it's more common with anomalous animals because they pass it down like that. But for human beings, it's not like X-Men genetic, like very clear. Even in X-Men, it's random if they end up with powers or not. What would happen if an immortal looked at SCP-096? Well, if you cannot die uh, due to physical harm, then it will keep uh, it will keep goring you. Yeah, it's not gonna stop because even if someone else looked at it, it's got to finish with you first, and you uh, can't die. So I guess it's. Uh, Eternity of pain and torment for you. Oh, no. Bad times. Prepper Chris, thank you for being a member. And can SCP-500 override O-Death if taken before O-Death? I just need to confirm O oh, death. What are we talking about here? 2935. That's a cactus article. That's very long. Um, let's, let's see if we can get a laconic going on. Laconic. No. SCP-2935, object class Keter, Laconic Containment Procedures. SCP-2935 has been sealed with concrete. Laconic Description. SCP-2935 is a cave leading to an alternate dimension in which everything in the world suddenly died of no noticeable cause. No decomposition occurs. Everything is just dead, gathering dust. At the end, it is revealed in a twist that this is one of potentially many other dead dimensions, and when someone comes out of the cave back into a healthy dimension, it does the same thing to them. So, that... It's contagious. It's dimensionally contagious. So, to our knowledge, 500 has not failed to cure anything. Um, and so with that in mind, I would happen upon the ideal... I believe that 500 has never failed. And <clears throat> that tells me that it could probably keep you alive but you would be the only one to live. So the whole dimension would be uh, effed and then you are left over, which doesn't sound super fun. Catching up in the chat, catching up in the chat. Does anyone that works at the foundation get paid? Most definitely. Of course we get paid. But uh, we, you know, we live on site in a secret bunker or a secret campus hidden away. So it's not that we can get a, a whole lot done with a large amount of money. Now, food and lodging is covered. We have the commissary. We have the different offshoot 
Foundation fast food chains. Uh, karaoke night is always a blast. But the most important thing is that uh, when you retire. Now, obviously, retiring is less likely than, saying, dying in the line of battle. But those who make it to retirement, it's a process of taking amnestics, being programmed with new memories, and a new civilian job, or maybe just a fine retirement, and you're given a house, uh, money, depending on your pay rate at the foundation, and how much you've made, and how much you deserve. A uh, higher rank will get you more promising living outside of the foundation. Uh, if you're just like a janitor, you're going to have an okay life. We're going to make sure you're set. It's just not going to be like lavish. But yes, that'll, uh, that's the vibe there. We get paid, but it's more in, I mean, what do we do with money until we get out anyways? And by then we don't remember. If Kirby was an SCP, how would you contain it? I'd put it in the room with the infinite cakes. Because A, there's infinite cakes, and it keeps eating them, and then we're fine. Or B, the infinite cakes uh, do not work because they have to be eaten by a human, and therefore more of them spawn. But Kirby doesn't care about that. So Kirby keeps eating the infinite, infinite cakes, and it stays in the room, and the cakes are taken care of. Two ketters, one cake. Done. Contained. Like a boss. That's why I'm the number one containment specialist in the foundation. Number one. Hi, what would happen if you put a fursuit in the clockworks? Well, Jack Lupin, thank you for being a member. I believe that you'd end up with an animatronic or maybe a spring track suit. Some sort of upgrade of that. Or... If you put it downgraded, you get like a stuffed animal or a damaged stuffed animal without the stuffing. Like an empty Build-A-Bear. I don't think that's a real SCP, your local idiot. SCP, the enigmatic baby. Is 734 a real entity, or is this some made-up off-lore stuff? Oh, it is known as the baby. All right. I've never heard of the enigmatic baby. What is SCP-734, Internet? Tell me about it in the archives. Any staff entering containment area must be contained in hazmat suits. No physical contact with the baby. Blood to be drawn via arterial catheter once daily. Amount to be determined reevaluated monthly. Handler standing by at all times in hazmat gear. Male, human, infant, seven, eight months of age. Normal development and health for a child its age. No mutations. Any human tissue making contact with 734 will begin to rapidly break down and flake away. This effect is most often triggered by skin to skin contact, but SCP 734 cell can cause the effect. This flaking will begin at the point of contact two hours after exposure. Spread the rate of 0.5 millimeters per minute. The means by which the flaking occurs is unknown as no form of viral, bacterial, or chemical agents are passed between 734 and through the subject. Cells begin to lose physical cohesion. Small patches of tissue begin to pe peel away in flakes. Well, I hate that. Eaten away, non-infectious nature of the effect and low survivability rate. Blood drawn has a very, very high strategic value. Oh my God. We use... Baby blood for assassinations. Wow. Oh, I didn't even know we were that dark. One drop of baby blood in someone's drink and they are uh, toasted. Oh, that's messed up. And we have a tale of using it as a weapon. We taught it to be an agent. Wacky fun. 
All right, that was an interesting read. Thank you for pointing out to me the most unlikely named anomaly, the enigmatic baby. Hmm. I really thought there wasn't an enigmatic baby. You, uh, you surprised me with that one. What does SCP-999 taste like? Would it be different for everyone? I am pretty sure that the taste is, uh, different between tasters. Because scent? Yeah, because the surface of 999 emits a pleasing odor that differs with whoever it is interacting with. Recorded scents include chocolate, fresh laundry, bacon, roses, and Play-Doh. So, yes, I imagine that taste would also differ from person to person. Jack Lupin, can 1471 escape from the app? I do not believe that's the case. Uh, oh, because I also, I, there's a great, if you haven't seen the redacted SCP web series put out by Lot One Productions, they do an episode, a live action episode on Mallow that is pretty good. And it looks like every time someone downloads the Mallow app, they get a slightly different iteration of Mallow. Almost like they're Shinigami from Death Note, how they're different. Uh, and so, yeah, you look at uh, 1471 on their web series. It's a very interesting interpretation. Unless that's actually what it is here. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, so it doesn't say if they are different instances or the same, but. And by the way, we are in the last 10 minutes of my phone battery, and that means we are in the last 10 minutes of this office hours. So get your questions in ASAP as we reach our holiday windup. Junior Researcher Cobalt, Dr. Sherman, I liked and subscribed like everyone watching this should right now. Is there a thing such as Site64? Well, you're damn right about that first part. Everyone make sure you hit like and subscribe. And Site64, so, you know, there is no canon, so it's pretty likely that someone has used Site64. But let's see if there's a very thorough Site64 somewhere. Secure Facility Dossier, Site 64. General Information. Founded in 1971. Founded by Dr. Hayden White. Location, Forest Park, Portland, Oregon. Cover story, the Portland Parks and Recreation Department Maintenance Stations. Research Containment Task Force Deployment. Anomalous Materials Synthesis. Monitoring of the three Portland's location of interest. Monitoring of the Wilson's Wildlife Solutions Group of Interest. Main offices. Staff. Anomalies currently under the jurisdiction of Site 64. And they got a lot of anomalies on site. So yeah, Site 64 is a fairly large anomaly, or a normal site. A fairly large site covering the Pacific Midwest. Or Pacific Northwest. Dr. Sherman, can you please explain SCP-6670? I think I know which one you're talking about. Is that the little girl who's not so little anymore? Oh, no. Not Site-6670. SCP-6670. Yup, okay. That's the move. That's messy. So what you're looking at is a 
Let me get the laconic on this one, see if they have a good explanation, because it's a long story otherwise. It doesn't look like they have a laconic for it. So, essentially, my thought process is that the, uh, it's a mother and daughter, and the daughter is severely neglected because of the mother's life choices and work choices, and it causes, and she ends up hiding in a wall nook and getting stuck, and then continuing to grow and continuing to grow and grow and grow until, like, she's super lanky, slender manning throughout the walls and stuff, and she becomes this distorted horror monster of a little girl. And it's very, very sad. And then the ceiling of the building collapses and crushes the mother to death, which is also very, very sad and tragic. It's just a really bad time for everyone involved, including the reader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dragon Rocks for you. Welcome to Site 42 staff. Thank you for becoming a member. Checking on the chat. Would a Zoid, aka a living mech, be an anomaly? If it's a robot that's alive, we consider it anomalous, Jack Lupin. TK2025, Dr. Sherman, who is Dizzy? I'm confused what SCP it is. I've seen it in your TikTok compilations on YouTube. I've heard of it. I just need my questions answered help. So, Dizzy is an SCP OC on TikTok who has not been active as SCP. They've been doing other cosplay for a while, I believe. But, so we should, get, I at least consider them inactive unless they come back. But... On the TikTok side of the SCP community, because duets are so much easier over there, YouTube Shorts just uh, added duets very recently, or even they're still implementing them. So on TikTok, with duets and all that, you could have interactions between characters. And so as the SCP researcher, I am constantly interacting with non-SCP anomalous entities as if I were studying them like an SCP officer. And then people will actually make SCP OCs and I would react and converse with them as well. And so, of course, they're not official unless they're on the SCP wiki, but you don't need to be official to have fun. It's hard to write an SCP article. It's hard to write a tale that stays on the site. Sometimes it's fun to just put on a costume and makeup and goof off. Heck, Dr. Sherman's only canon because someone else wrote him. I didn't write him. In fact... They wrote him, and then I started using him. How do you guys find new SCPs? Do regular people report anomalies? Arlo, good question. So we are always on the lookout. We are a surveillance industry. We are constantly watching your phones and the internet and watching the news. And we have agents in law enforcement and news agencies. We're always keeping tabs on it. So when we get word, we send out our agents to investigate. When our agents give us word, we send out a containment team. Beyond that, uh, people do call the cops and they're like, oh, this monster's here. And so we tap the line, we find out about it, we figure out the situation and we amnesticize everybody so we don't have no problems. Dr. Sherman, the Z05 Council, are you aware sharing confidential information with civilians is strictly prohibited? Of course I'm aware of that overseer. That's why this is a foundation encrypted link this is only available to certified Foundation staff. We have not had Steve accidentally put us out on public in several months. And we amnesticize everyone who saw that stream. So there's no problem here. I'm just here with my friendly Site42 staff having a great Christmas party. Mm 
Whoops. Gotta reclaim my pen. Can't leave that down there. All right, Site 42 staff, we have reached the end of our Dr. Sherman's holiday office hours. I hope you've had a wonderful Christmas Eve with me this evening. I hope you've had plenty of eggnog and Christmas cheer. Mm -mm. A fine finish to the evening. And so with that, as I always do, I will tell you my favorite... SCPs in order. Now get your pens ready. Remember that we do not say my favorite or my SCPs are my favorite because they're mine. That's cheating. So when I talk about my favorite SCPs, it's by other people. If you want to see my SCPs, you got to go to the link in the description, the Site42 Beacons link, where I have my SCP author page, as well as all of the Site42 support links. So become a member so I see your chats easier. Become a patron so you get early access to our videos. Uh, buy some Site42 merch. Donate through our Ko-Fi. If there's any way to donate to Site42 and help us make better content, I am there to help you make that donation. Beyond that, my favorite SCPs are 3999, 3043, 008-J, Spooky-J, 5031, 5715. Gosh darn it. Is it 5715 or 57? 5175. Five? I always forget. I always forget. 5175. 5175. Death knife. 5175. And then 5320. I'll go over them one more time, especially since I messed that up again. It is 3999-3043-008-J, Spooky-J, 5031, 5175, and 5320. This has been Dr. Theron Sherman on our Christmas Eve eggnog and Yule Log Q&A for office hours. I hope you had fun. I sure did. I hope you have Happy holidays. Keep an eye out for tomorrow's video. It is a reading of a Thanksgiving SCP that applies just as much to Christmas, so don't worry. Uh, do worry, because it's really gross. So be aware of that going in. Warning. And with that in mind, I will see you all in the next video. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Next year all our troubles will be out of sight.